What's up? Today, we have the parameter pages. It's parameter time, baby. These little doohickeys, the endless doohickeys, do so much. So we are going to go make a new pattern. That's the one from the last one. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna kill it. Pattern's gone. Good night. Metronome is there. Metronome gone. Good night. Introduction to parameter pages. So if we learn to navigate these pages, we will become fluent in the OPZ in no time. So let's become fluent. And it's going to take some time, but apparently none of it. Switching between the pages. You've seen me do this before. Here's the white page. Toggle. Here's the green page. Toggle. Here's the purple page. Toggle. And the yellow page. Toggle back to white. And the entirety of the rest of the chapter. <laughs> All the parameter pages. Honestly, you're going to go back to this over and over and over as you learn. Because, you know, sometimes you forget, oh, what does this thing do when we're on this guy? And a lot of it is pretty consistent. And they were pretty good with the way they mapped it out. So the main tracks, the first four, kicks, snares, hi-hats, and percussion, the little sample wavelength thing there, those tracks have these things. But really, the only difference is the white page for those two. If you see, everything else is the ADSR for green, the LFO, and then the FX and panning and volume for the track. So first four, kick, snare, hi-hat, percussion, have that white page. And then the next four have this white page. Bass, lead, chord, and the arpeggiator have the same white page. The only difference with the arpeggiator is that instead of an LFO, it has special arpeggiator things, like the speed, of the arpeggiator, the pattern, the style, and the range. I'm not gonna dive too much into the arpeggiator because there's a whole chapter on that, but I will show you an overview. So let's do those first eight tracks. Let's get a kick. So I'm gonna make this have two. Here's the white page for the first four. Really the first four tracks are just sample tracks. Here's pitch. On my kick, hear that? Here is reverse. This is a binary thing. It's either reversed or it's not reversed. Let's get a better sample so you can hear the reverse. So when this is reverse, it's gonna sound like It's reversed, and if you get past the halfway point, it's, it'll be not reversed. So it's a binary thing. The filter, it goes from low pass to high pass. Low pass. High pass and resonance for the filter. Crank it all the way up so you can hear it. Resonance on the low pass. Over the resonance on the high pass. On all these parameters, if it flashes green, you see that? The green flash means that you're back at the center point. And if you are really wanting to be specific at the exact center point, it flashes its base color again. So it goes green, base color for a split second, and then green again, and then you know you're off the other point. So I'm off to the left, green, flashed there, See that? See that little flash? 
that's the middle point. So then it's right in the center. Same with pitch. Let's start laying something down. Start recording. That's record armed. Turn the BPM up a little bit. Cool. Two, three, four. One time. over to the yellow parameter page next for what we want to do. We have FX send one, FX send two, panning level. I have delay. And a reverb. Right, it's set to like a short, very short decay springy reverb right now. So it kind of like stereos in your ear a little bit. But let's add a little delay to this. Give it that little extra AE. Also, just to show you, we have panning and level. So you'll hear the shaking going from left to right, and you'll hear it getting loudly louder and softer. On the left. Bring it back to green, it'll be in the center. And then quiet. Get it to a nice level there. And we have an unused track, which is the snare track. So let's do something with that. Let's show you the green page with that. So on the sample tracks, what the ADSR really does is like the sustain is basically moving where you go to in the sample. So right now it's all the way up. So you have the full sample. This is with everything else down, right? Attack, decay, and release are down. So it's basically moving in a block where you are in the sample. See that? Let's go to a cuckoo sample. So let's just get the front part of this sample. And fade it out a little bit. and cut off a little bit of the front. So the attack cuts from the front, the sustain cuts from the back, the decay fades into it, the release fades out of it. And... Let's shift it down. the key so I don't want to use that <clears throat> that's probably better
weird as hell. Let's do that. You see that? I added parameter locks to it to make it. So you can do that with samples, which is a pretty cool thing to do. You can kind of just automate the pitch. The LFO on here works the same way as the LFO works on here. So let's go on to a bass lead or chord track to show you the LFO. So the LFO. First dial is the amount that you're sending to the LFO. Second one is the speed, which it shows you in a flash, which is nice. Third one is the target, and I'll go over all the targets, but it's cool. So as you flip it, it shows you a color for the target, as well as the number for the target. So one, blue two, yellow three, red four, blue five. Is that two blues? Green. Did I say that was blue? Oh, it's purple. Yeah. Colors are so hard. The LFO targets are the same for both the synth tracks and the percussion tracks. This is what they are. The green one is the synth parameter one. The purple one is synth parameter two. The yellow one, the filter cutoff. The red one, filter resonance. Oh, I forgot to cross my T, oh little guy. The blue one, dude, is panning. And the what is the volume. So let's leave that there. Oh, and the last one's shape. So like the shape of the wave of the LFO. Is it square, is it triangle? But I'll show you those in a second. Kind of cool. Um, filter cut off. four shapes. All the way at the bottom is a free running triangle. So every time the LFO hits a, the peak, it just keeps running through. Same thing with the next one before the middle, only at complete backwards is free running triangle. Then you get into a free running square wave. So it's like shifting from a triangle to a square. You get a free running square. Same thing. It does not re-trigger. Then once you hit the middle, that's the middle, you have a re-triggered square. So every time it goes, it re-triggers, which means it starts at the beginning of a square wave again. And then when you get all the way to the top, where it flashes, it blinks when you're at the top, see? Then you have a re-triggered Illuminati wave. Go all the way to the bottom. Turn it up so you can hear. Free running. It's a lot more 
jagged than this. a re-triggered square and then a re-triggered triangle it's very hard to tell the difference but that's what it is record um Add bass. We need some bass up in this piece. Let's bring it down. Sweet. Let's go. Triggers on the note. Should add an arpeggio. So on the arp, the only different page is the the once purple LFO page is now the blue arp page. So that's the speed of the arp. It uh, adheres to your BPM.
ARP pattern. There's a whole chapter on the ARP, but I'm going to run through the patterns. They're, they're, I wrote them right there. Can't you see them? The first one is number one is manual. So the order you put them in is the order they play back in. See that? This one is up. This one is down. Oops. Two, three. Four, up, down. Five is down, up. And six is random. Next one is the style. The styles are really cool. I'm just going to show you them right now because there's a whole chapter on it. I'm not, I'm going to go and do it then. Arp. God, that's nice. Ooh. And um, this last one gives range to the arp. So it'll add on octaves. What the hell? Oh. So if you're on random, the range doesn't affect it, which is interesting, but good to know. So normal range, we'll start adding on octaves. <laughs> I like this, and I like this, and I like this. So let's just add this to our little song. I like where this is at for now. I'm going to save it. Hold P and save your pattern. Cha Ching. Now I can add in a bunch of dumb sh No, that's not what I meant to do. But anyway, I can add in stuff. And now I can take it away and it goes back to where it was. Effects one and two. We're gonna fly through the rest of these. Go to the effects track. This is effects one track. Here are all the effects. Let's say I'm on this. And I'm 
going to turn off all of this one and fully send to that one. I'm going to go to the effects track. And if I hold shift, I can play the most recent thing that I play. So on the delay track, we got two types of delay here. This is like a slapback. Where it's slightly offsetting. And this is a classic, like off a certain number of beats. So. Very cool. Also, that just sounds sick, right? <laughs> That's so dope. So for the delay, that's the cutoff, and that's the amount. Let's do that amount, and no cutoff, full amount, which sounds like this, with a quick cutoff, full amount with a long cutoff, basically a forever delay, bring it down. And then you got a filter and a resonance. Go low pass on the filter. Too low. It's usually a good idea to put a low pass on your delays um, if you want it to be a little more subtle and less in your face. And here's some resonance on it. So to select which effect you want, you hold track while you're on the effect track, and you click it. Now let's go to number two, the reverb. This is the amount, and that's the cutoff. So let's bring the cutoff back. Turn the amount all the way up, and bring the cutoff. Jeez, the amount is just too damn high. Let's put the cutoff way up and the amount down. High pass it. No, don't high pass. It's a very finicky reverb. Next one is a overdrive distortion. So this is the amount and the cutoff. Not very pleasant on this sound. <laughs> yeah, so that's the bit crusher. Completely destroys it. <laughs> Just turns it into noise. Next one is the tape track. So this will be a quick intro to the tape track. This is the tape track, boy. First, we got speed, fine tuning, filter and resonance. Filter and resonance is pretty, pretty constant throughout the app. Through <laughs> app. Throughout the OPZ motherfucker. So this is speed if I play it. You don't hear anything? Luke, why isn't anything happening? That's because you gotta hold a thing. So let's turn it up again. I don't want to get too much into the tape track right now, but this is 
the amount of time, like the how long the tape is. So short tape, long tape. That is repeating. But then, if you're holding a thing, and you change it. So this is fine tuning. And this is screwing with it really fast. FX send one, FX send two, pan and level. So also on the tape track, we got the yellow page. See, it's just a yellow page and a white page. We don't have the effects sending to anything. Let's send the effects, or let's send the tape to effect numero uno, lay delay. Something more subtle. With the <laughs> so weird. Let's go to the master track. Side note about the master track, it's really cool. It figures out what key you're playing in and then it kind of lights up the ones that are in the key and you can change the chord structure of most of your tracks on the fly. <laughs> Oh, 
Shut the hell up, metronome. Have I had you on the whole time? What an asshole. And then resonance. Super Panic. The last two are module motion and lights. Those two I'm not going to cover because they're not music. Right now I'm just covering the music of this. You can also control lights and you can control video and animation and stuff. I don't even have a screen or lights hook up to this, so I can't really show you that. But you understand now how this stuff works. The next one is the track. We're going to learn all about step count and step length and linking tracks and doing all kinds of fun stuff with your tracks. Wow, there was a substantial amount to cover there. I learned a lot in this video. I hope you did too. If you liked it, be sure to hit like and to subscribe. If you made it this far, fist bump. And I will see you in the next one.